forward to type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's, a, it's an opportunity to share and um, find out if God can speak through Balaam's mule, then you know he can speak through us, right? Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, um, I mean, I got, anybody remember Dan Quayle? Mm -hmm. He was the vice president under uh, Father Bush, mm -hmm. George Bush. Um, Dan Quayle <clears throat> was the vice president of the United States when I was in law school. And, um, I mean, Dan Quayle said some things, and amen. Amen. I mean, he was, he was something. It's a terrible thing to waste a mind. Remember, it was, it was United Negro College film, but a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And he got up there and said to them, it's a terrible thing to waste a mind. And I'm like, oh, that's not exactly what they were <laughs> But he was like that. He would just say things inappropriately. He was kind of clumsy with his words and, and things of that nature. But I remember I found out he was a lawyer. And, um, I was in law school and I just kept telling myself when things got tough, Dan Quayle's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And it, that encouraged me because I was like, if he could do it, if God knows I can do it, amen? And I think about that, right, in, in, in the sense of, you know, if, if God can talk through a mule, how much the more with his spirit dwelling on the inside of us can he talk through each one of us, amen? And that's why I think it's it's good and it's appropriate um, to give God's people an opportunity to share because it's it's one and the same spirit, right? Pastor doesn't have a different spirit of God than you have. The bishop doesn't have a different spirit of God than you have. We got the same spirit. Amen. No, 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 no. Should I'm talking about the Holy Spirit? Yeah. No, people will say, right? We have the same spirit. We don't have anything different, amen? Um, and if we just walk in obedience to that same spirit, then we'll be blessed no matter who has the microphone in their hand. Amen? amen? amen. Uh, is that dangerous sometimes? Yeah, it could be, but we trust God to shut down those that need to be shut down. Amen. amen. Shut them down. Shut them, shut them down. <laughs> y'all don't know that song. <laughs> amen, because y'all don't listen to stuff like that. <laughs> y'all don't know nothing about it. So, but we trust God to do that, and but we also on the uh, on the positive side trust God to use those who have a sincere heart to share something that will help us all. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, and so we have Reflection Sunday where the people of God will come and share, and and I will go and sit myself down and take some notes. Amen. Amen. And um, I'm going to. Once again, give it to Sister Fennell so that she can take charge. <laughs> Amen. She laughs, but you know, Brother Les, my wife likes taking charge of stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's kind of funny when I ask her to do something that she asks, like, oh, who, me? You know, she likes to take charge of stuff. It's stuff, not. You have to be about your father's business, amen? Amen. More so than the other stuff. That's so I'm going to ask her to come and be about the father's business on this morning and to lead us today in our Reflection Sunday. Amen? amen. amen. Let's say amen as she comes and we pray amen. to God for amen. Reflection Sunday, October 2017. Amen. amen. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. amen. Collect my thoughts. Amen. <laughs> I guess they don't need to be collected. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the God is funny. Yes, he, he is. is funny to me. It I'm sorry. Is, he is. Like anybody else, but he's funny to me. <laughs> because he does things like that. You know, when you try to um you try to prepare and, and do things and and God certainly, don't get me wrong, because God wants you to prepare. He does want you to prepare. But you should already be prepared because you should have the word in you. Amen. And then he'll work with the word that you have in you. Amen. And then he'll help you where you are. Yes. So, with that being said, I guess I will start. Oh, praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Since God stopped my thought over there. <laughs> or arrested my thought. Amen. 
because I was going to talk about our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts, the voices in our head, the things that you know we hear, our uh, thinking, the, sometimes like Joyce Meyer says, the stinking thinking. <laughs> yeah. like to say, the stinking thinking, God wants to get rid of that. And so, um, yeah, so I was over there trying to collect my thought. <laughs> and um, I, you know, I had to listen to the voice that should be more dominant, which is God's voice. Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of voices in our head. You know, we have the voices of our spouses. We have the voices of other people, you know, our church members. We have the voices of the world, songs in our head. We have all kinds of things coming at us in all kinds of, from all kinds of directions. And we need to learn how to listen to the voice that matters. Because all those other things will lead us in places that we don't need to be. And I guess that um, where what started me with this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, y'all know that um, my mom was uh, hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And I got this call from my niece. I was sitting at my desk and she said, oh, um, Nana's in a lot of pain. I'm gonna have to take her to the hospital. And my first thought, my first thought was, oh, my mother's sick, oh Lord. And God immediately arrested that thought. And he said to pray, he said, no, pray, pray for her. So I gathered my thoughts <laughs> together and I put them in the right place, and I, then I changed it around. I said, okay, Lord, you're able, you know what's going on, take away the pain. Remove the pain, remove the discomfort, whatever it is, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and I just started with all these other things according to what I was hearing God say to me, because God is the one, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. um, Pastor Jeff just, just talking about that, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us mm -hmm. into what we should say, guides us and leads us into the truth. And the truth, of course, mm -hmm. is God's word. So that's what I was hearing, and that's what I started to say until thoughts got in my head again, my own thoughts. And I started, mm. uh, yeah. you know, all this is, and you know how fast your brain works. Yeah. It is so fast, and so is the enemy, too. But it is so fast because I'm saying this and I'm hearing the Spirit say what to pray and I'm praying, but at the same time, I'm hearing uh, the reports from the doctors about Joseph. So then I started saying, I, I was praying, but then I started saying, um, okay, Lord, heal her, but heal her on this side of the earth. Because... We know God healed Joseph, but he healed him up in heaven. You know, Joseph is whole and nothing's broken or missing. So I sort of, uh, I guess my brain started getting smart and saying, okay, Lord, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray what you're telling me to pray for healing, but I'm going to add my own mm -hmm. <laughs> and say on this side of the earth. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm telling you about the danger of the voices that get in your head. Mm -hmm. Because it can easily change what God said mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, make it twisted. You know, twist the truth of what God told you. And then you start to believe that instead of believing what God said. Mm -hmm. So immediately, again, the spirit rose up on the inside of me and said, no, just pray like I said. And then I just started to continue to pray. Now it turns out my mom had to, you know, have procedures on it. She's fine now, bless the Lord. I mean, God is good and God Amen. is faithful. And and that's what um the voice in my head said too, you know, that I'm a good God, I'm a faithful God, I'm a true God, I'm a healer, I'm a provider. I will do this, I will take yes. care of it. Thank you, Lord. So when you start to really listen to the voices that you should and put all those other voices to the side, then everything should work out the way that God intended it to. So that's where um, 
I sort of got started. And then so I was just thinking about this battle that we have with, you know, the voices that's in our head. And I think the problems arise when we allow what we think to interfere with what we know, mm -hmm. the knowing on the inside of us about who God is and the truth of his word. That's why it's so important to get the word of God down in our hearts. Because if we uh, have the word of God in our hearts, we rely more on what we know and those voices, the voices of what we know on the inside of us, those things will take uh, dominance mm -hmm. in our heads rather than the voices of the outside world that's screaming at us. You know, and sometimes they do. You know, they, they, they um, like, when, even when I say, like, we listen to our spouses or we listen to other people, we allow them to dominate uh, our thoughts and tell us who we are when we know what who, who God says that we are. Mm -hmm. Like even me, sometimes I look in the mirror and you know I I think all women do this. <laughs> I don't think it's just me. <laughs> but you look in the mirror and you see a blemish or something, and then you start calling yourself, oh, oh that is so, oh look at you, that's just so fat or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at and and mm -hmm. but. That's not God speaking to you. You're not listening right. to the right That's voice. Right. Amen. You're Amen. listening to the, the voices of the world, the Amen. you know, the people that say that you should look Amen. this way or you should be skinny or you should your skin should be perfect and smooth and all that. Those are the voices you're listening to instead mm -hmm. of the voice of God that says, right. You are beautiful, you are beautiful Amen. and wonderfully made. Amen. You know, Amen. those are the voices that we need Amen. to listen to when we especially when we look into the mirror, because the mirror yeah. will tell us some things. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the natural. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the spiritual. The mirror will tell us some things yeah. <laughs> that are just not true. <laughs> you know, so we need to learn how to listen to the voice of God, the voice that should take preeminence. Yeah. And then I'm thinking about, you know, how people uh, sometimes tell you what they believe to be true based on their own experiences mm -hmm. and circumstances. So that sometimes we listen to uh, their advice. Mm -hmm. But we can't do that either, because their advice may not be where God wants to take us. You know, Because they're giving you advice based on something that they've done or what's happened to them. Mm -hmm. So if you tell them that you want to start your own business, and they tell you, well, I tried to start my own business, and it was just too hard because I didn't know where the money was going to come from, or I, I was trying to get this client, and the client just refused to come my way, so I had to give that up. So you can't do it. <laughs> you can't let that voice be dominant in your head. If God said to you, if the voice in your head from God said, this is what I want you to do, you need to listen to the voice of God mm -hmm. and not the yeah. advice that somebody else is trying to give you. So sometimes it's a, it is a fight that you know we have to constantly kick voices out of our head, you know. <laughs> and I am constantly, trust me, I know you yeah. know, I'm constantly kicking voices out of my head because my head sometimes it tells me some crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it tells me some crazy stuff. Sometimes I, I say, okay, you gotta get behind me. <laughs> that's just not that's just not the word of God. That's thinking thinking. That's the worst mindset. <laughs> anyway, so I just jumped right into this because God just sort of threw me on the spot. <laughs> but um we do. We have these voices, all these voices in our heads that's vying for attention. But we need to discern the voice of God. And you do that by learning his word, getting that word inside of you so that you can hear him think, speaking through your heart. Because God speaks through your heart. He speaks through your mm -hmm. heart. You might hear it in your head, but he speaks through your heart. So that's the voice that we need to listen to. And I was just thinking of... Um, there was a scripture I was trying to get together mm -hmm. over there, and now I it just left my head, of course. But yes, that's it. <laughs> See, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Thank God for listening to the right voice. <laughs> Amen. I still don't know what it is, Lord, but uh, perhaps someone else knows. But God said, "It's not. It's not what's inside that defiles a man. It's not what's 
Yes, it's not what's outside that defiles a man. It's inside. Mm -hmm. So those, the inside is your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's what messes you up. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's those, it's, it's those hidden things that's inside that messes us up. So if we think that our thoughts, are, um, just think about it, your thoughts, they mess you up because your thoughts will lead you down the right path or lead you down the wrong path, mm -hmm. you know? So we just have to learn how to discern uh, what God is saying and hear his voice. That was Matthew 15, 10. Matthew 13, 10. 15, 15 10. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we have that scripture reference, so I'm just not throwing stuff. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And then there's another scripture that says, As a man thinketh, so is he. Amen. And that's from Proverbs somewhere. <laughs> but, um, as a man thinketh, so is he. So you have to realize that as you think, if you think along, you know, the right thought, you think what God wants you to think about, you you uh, speak what God wants you to, that's what you will be. So even as far as, as trying to start your own business, if God told you to do it, as you think you can do it, yeah, you can do it, because God said so. Amen? So, yeah, that was, that was something else. But um, one other thing, and then I'll... Um, call somebody else up here. <laughs> I just, you know, because the voices in my head, you know, I was thinking about, there was a few examples in the Bible where God was speaking to people. Well, there's all kinds of examples in the Bible. There are a few. But there's all kinds of examples in the Bible. And um, Samuel, when he spoke to the child Samuel, and Samuel didn't know it was the voice of God calling him. Mm -hmm. And he kept coming, and he went to Eli and said, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. And he said, no, it wasn't me. Go go lay back down. Mm -hmm. and, said, oh. and he can't hear it again. I heard you. No, it wasn't mm -hmm. me. <laughs> and so he finally said, he said to him, Eli said to him, the next time you hear it, just say, uh, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. Mm -hmm. So he heard it again. And then he heard God's voice. And he realized that was the voice of God. But it trained him because later on, he was able to hear everything God said, you know, Samuel mm -hmm. was one of the great prophets, you know, Amen. so um, that was, that was down, that, it was good that he allowed voice, um, God's voice, to hear God's voice that way, and then God knows that sometimes we doubt him, you know, and I thought about um, Doubting Thomas, where Jesus was speaking to him, and he had to, Jesus sort of had to prove, look, look, put your hand, put your finger through here, it's me, you know, yeah. so God understands that, but we still must learn his voice. God still mm -hmm. wants us to recognize his voice. Amen. And Gideon, even, who God was speaking to, and, and God sort of like uh, said, okay, this is me. And Gideon did all these examples with the make the fleece sweat and all this other mm -hmm. stuff, you know. So God demonstrated. Well, now God, God said there ain't going to be no other signs. So we're going to have to just follow this Bible and get it in our hearts. <laughs> Amen. Because God's not going to... Uh, come down anymore and be like, okay, this is me, y'all. I'm speaking. We're gonna have to do that for ourselves. Amen. Amen. So I just just wanted to um, just give you some guidelines and and just about the situation with um, Paul and Saul and how God met him. You know, so God does speak. We can be trained mm -hmm. to hear His voice. Yes, you know, and we just gotta know to yes. follow it. Yes. Amen. Yes. So yes. we hear those voices, and and you know that you hear the voice of God when it lines up with yes. this word. Amen. If it does not line up with this word, then you know, okay, that's not God. Mm -hmm. That's either you, that's the enemy, or that's somebody else's voice <laughs> getting in your head. Amen. Amen. So we just need to, to um, make sure it's the voice of God that we follow after. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And get rid of all the other voices <laughs> in our head. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And with that, I am going to, <laughs> to ask Sister Nida to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll be just like Sister Ebony looking for my, um, Oh, uh oh. <laughs> like you know, like you know, was my verse in the Bible, but I guess it's all connected anyway. So God is good. Um, I'm asking God how He's gonna connect this, but I'm just gonna do what He told me. Yes, exactly. so He will do the rest. Um, it's just so funny talking back about school, right? That um, 
all the scenarios that happen, you know, me getting pregnant and not having the money to go to school, everything made it so impossible mm -hmm. um, for this to happen. But God kept telling me, just keep going, you know, mm -hmm. even though that the circumstances was making it difficult and impossible. Mm -hmm. um, I have like, I think it's like 45 emails from um, from the school telling me that I got rejected to apply for um, for graduation and all this stuff. You need to come to the office and, and God just kept telling me, keep going, you know? And, um, and I just kept saying, how am I gonna pay for school? And I just kept hearing God saying, keep going. Okay. So, you know, and how my husband is that he was so busy at work and everything and um i said let me just ask him to see based, based on his work if he could help me with the with the gi 11. Mm -hmm. so uh but i knew that it was gonna be an issue because of him you know applying and all that stuff but there was just one day that he did it but again it's like the way i was going is like God would just keep telling me to go, even mm -hmm. though that nothing made sense. Even mm -hmm. though I, I, I knew that Chris didn't have the time, I knew that Chris would, couldn't do it or he wouldn't do it. So, but God kept telling me, just keep going. Mm -hmm. And I trusted that, you know, even when I saw that I kept seeing all these emails, finally, um, one day I stopped by the financial aid and they like, um, well, you know, I don't know how they started your school without even paying for school you know you owe this and you in school and then i said well i we my husband sent this um 9 11 application and we're waiting for it and all this stuff so finally um what ended up happening to make it sure is that um today i received the letter saying that um that i'm eligible 100 percent and on top of that you know i paid my books and Chris was like, oh, you're spending all this money in books. And you know, and they gave me like 250 for the books. So God is good. God is wonderful. Everything that you do is wonderful. And um, going a little bit with what Sister Evelyn was saying was that um, last night my husband went, um, how can I say, like um, they had this birthday party, you know, and he went last night, I stood with the kids because I didn't feel like going nowhere. So, um, you know, and the only thing I said to him was, just come home a little early, don't come too late, so we could go to church. So, I woke up in the middle of the night, I said, I'm not going to even look at the time, because that's going to, that could cause me to fight, because it's late. <laughs> so, I didn't look at the time, just like God telling me, just get up and pray. So, I got up and I started praying, but something happened. During me, during the time, my praying was, you know, to make sure that my husband makes it home safe, you know, to make sure that we're here today. Mm -hmm. So, um, but during the time of me praying that, a thought came to my mind, and I'm gonna try to explain it, but it was weird. It was like, um, when you know, like when you pray to God, you don't see Him, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I wanted to do. Like my thought was kind of telling me to do like a you know is that how you say it like to do um to put a face okay to my God mm -hmm. right and and that same thought or my spirit my spirit was telling me don't do that mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. you know because it was like I don't know how to say it like idolizing like oh yeah yeah Visualizing yeah that. yeah so right there I stopped. And I said, God, help me, right, so you know, right. take all the fakeness away. Mm -hmm. yes. Take everything that doesn't belong to you because I want to serve you with a clean heart. Mm -hmm. And um, and that thought went away. Praise you God. Know, and I was able to do my praise <laughs> the way it is. And I think I could connect the school with that. Is that the simple way that in the world we go through those fights, you know, where the devil is telling us, you can't do it, yes. you can't do it, yeah. you know, and God is telling us, keep going, keep going. Yeah. And then when we're praying, it's the same thing. When we pray, here comes 
this yeah. enemy uh, that tells us you can't pray, yes. mm -hmm. or you know, or, or you don't belong mm -hmm. with your knees praying. Mm -hmm. He's not gonna listen to you, mm -hmm. you know. And here comes God with His grace and His mercy Amen. and His love, yeah. you know, to tell us you could do it. Amen. So that's it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. And just to, you know, just listening to Nida, you know, she's saying she keeps hearing the voice of mm -hmm. God. Yeah. He's telling her, you know, and that's what God wants us to hear his voice and wants us so that we can be led to a better place. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do. And, 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 and it's so funny how the enemy works. Because right in the middle, we can never think that we got it all together. Mm -hmm. But just because we're praying, we're okay. Mm -hmm. The enemy will come in the middle of your prayer and interrupt mm -hmm. your thoughts. Yes, and and try to twist yeah. with God because he knows Amen. as you're praying, that's communication with God. Mm -hmm. So he knows you're communicating with God. So here he comes and he tries to interrupt your prayer with things, you know, twisting what God mm -hmm. is telling you. Right in the yeah. midst, mm -hmm. you know? So wow, that's good. God is good. Patricia's <laughs> <laughs> gonna come down. Amen. That's the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, um, my reflection is kind of more, um, I think, where God is has me at, and He's correcting me. So I was looking to. Um, Get encouragement, you know, because God is leading me in a direction and I've been struggling with it. So I was studying Gideon. And as I'm like studying Gideon, I started thinking about like the children of Israel, like the cycle, like how God would deliver them and then they would, you know, repent and they would worship and follow God and then they would fall back into idols. And I was sitting there judging them, like, what is wrong with these people? Like, God is doing so many great things for them, and they just can't keep it together. How, how do they fall back into, you know, I wash your worship and idols and all that? And then God kind of, like, convicted me, because <laughs> he brought to remembrance one day I was complaining in my car about something. Because, I mean, I've been praying for this one thing, and it still hadn't happened. And I was just kind of, like, going off, um, you know, to God about how people... And get on my nerves, it's just like consistent, blah blah blah. And God kind of like showed a line of my heart about how much I ask for things, but that I don't always pray or praise Him. He showed me the scale of justice and He showed it to me uneven, like it was weighed down with prayer requests, but up here it's very light on the praise. And you know, I, I went through a phase where I was just like declaring, decreeing, and God was answering my prayers, but I really wasn't praising him like I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes, you know, when you hear that scripture, it says, uh, Philippians 4, 6, where it says, don't worry about anything, but in your heart, in your, all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And that scripture is good. It says, you know, to go to God with your request and to pray to him, but we are me. Um, sometimes forget about the thankfulness and praising him for who he is. And I think um, it's important to be mindful of his goodness and mindful of who he is because it also diminishes the problems. And I think that I lost focus of who God really is and how great and awesome he is. And I started dwelling on the thing that he wanted me to do or dwelling on the thing that I didn't have and I was forgetting the great exploits. Wow. So here I was judging the children of Israel and here in my own personal life, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And then he took me to um, 2 Chronicles 20 and kind of like really shone the light on this King Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. Like this man Man, I really want to be like this guy. <laughs> because he was had such great faith. So the backdrop is the Moabites and Ammon and all these other countries rallied against Israel. So this servant comes up to him and was like, there's a lot of multitudes coming at you right now. And in verse 3, he says, it says, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all of Judah. 
the first thing he did was go to God. And as a king, he had access to counsel, he had generals, he could have went to them and said, okay, how are we gonna fight this war? What is the logical thing to do here? What can we do? Instead, he prayed and fasted. And not only him, but the whole country fasted and prayed. And then I had to look at myself, like how many times when I'm going through a thing that I, do I go to one of my girlfriends? You know, asking them or going to them. It's like, oh. And I, it's, just, it's hard when you, he's reflecting on yourself and it's just like, well, I really am missing it. Like, where did I miss the mark? But yeah, he went and he fasted and he prayed. And he didn't go to them and, or go to God and say, God, look at all this stuff and all, all this things that's happening. He went to him and he just started praising God. Wow. Verses 5 through 12, he's just declaring the goodness of God, saying that you are God who drew out the inhabitants. Like he's bringing to remembrance all the things that God has done for them. And then, now they all continued still worshiping and praising God. And it was at that point that the spirit broke. And someone prophesied and told them, you don't have to fight this battle. Mm -hmm. And he said, just position yourselves. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And even then I was impressed with Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat's faith because he chose the Levites mm -hmm. to go out. Now, as you know, the Levites were a tribe that God set aside to worship and to serve in the temple. So naturally, I'm thinking, when you were gonna get in a fight, that's not the type of group of people that you're with you, because they're not strong. They just, they used to be in the temple, they have soft hands. But he chose to bring them, and they went out before them, and they worshiped God, they didn't fight, he didn't bring his generals. He went out and he worshiped God. And it was in that praise that God caused confusion amongst the camp. And the only thing that they had to do was go collect the spoil. And I had to look at that in my own life. Like, I need to worship God. And God inhabits the praises of his people. And inhabits means to live in and occupy. Yes. God takes inhabitation. He it's like he becomes one yeah. with our praise. Mm -hmm. So just worshiping him and telling him how good he is, he knows those things that are on your heart. Mm -hmm. You don't even really need to always go to him. It's just like in uh, Romans where it says the spirit roams. Mm -hmm. and, and you know the spirit makes intercession for you. Sometimes just worshiping God is enough. You know, telling him how good he is when you have a financial need and your account's not looking right. Just praising and worshiping him for being Jehovah Jireh, your provider. You know, you need healing. Thank him for being your healer. It's just a matter of just worshiping him for who he is, being mindful of his power and his presence. And, and it's easy to get distracted because of the things that's going on in the world and then the media and in our own personal life. Sometimes those things are so real to us that we forget that we have a God who holds the world in its place. You know, he created us, he, he holds us together, and he loves us and he cares about us, and he just wants us to just worship him. He wants a relationship with us. He just wants to be with us. He wants to be mindful of him, to go to him, not our girlfriends, or, or go to Google, or try to go to WebMD, yeah. you know? <laughs> he wants you to go to him. And I think it's just a matter of programming. Yeah. Know, ourselves to just stop, yeah. you know, not just to do logic and to think and to try yeah. to figure it out, just worship him yeah. there in his presence. You'll find everything you need the answer, the provision. Yeah. You know, he may drop something in someone's spirit to say, Go buy this for them or go do this, or mm. he just gives you everything you need. So, I think it's just, you know, we gotta make the scales of justice more even, you know, not yeah. so much with all these requests, yeah. but we have to make it where the praise. Outweighs the request. You know? Amen. So, Amen. Praise the Lord, that's where God has me at. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just wrote down a few things that um, you know that Patricia was talking about. And one thing she said, you know, like because we do that, we um look at other people and we sort of make our own judgments mm -hmm. and then God you know, I thought about the mirror. 
the, the natural nerve, yeah. but the spiritual nerve doesn't look too good sometimes either. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You can look in the spiritual nerve and say, hey, yeah. thou art the man. Yes. <laughs> you can talk about them, but you're the one, you know. Amen. So, yes, yeah, so I just thought about that. And, and there's a scripture that says that um, God weighs us and this, we be found wanting in the balance, you know. Like, yeah. So, you were talking about that and being weighed and, um, you know, you, God, sometimes it's us that need the work, you know, it's us that's lacking, you know, so that's why the scales are so unbalanced. <laughs> yeah. Because God said, you gotta balance the scale a little bit, you know, yeah, you gotta do a little better here. So, yeah, and, and, and we do, we allow, we even allow our situations to speak to us, you know, they become, like you said, they become so real that's because they're speaking to you. Mm -hmm. So you start Amen. doing things based on what you hear, your situation speaking to you, instead of what you know God is saying to you. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, with the, because we talk about praying a lot to get out of situations, but sometimes it is just praising God. But even that, God Amen. is speaking to you, telling you to praise me. Amen. Praise Amen. me, and I'll get you out of this situation. Amen. Our Lord tells us, even sometimes, to pray because that's what we've been taught. Amen. But sometimes God will say, praise me, Amen. praise that's me, right. and I will get you out, I will show you out of this, show you a way out of this situation. So God is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> is. Awesome. Yeah. God, I can't yeah. say that about yeah. him. Yeah. I'm gonna ask so, Brother Les, would you like to come and share? You know, so it's it's interesting that that uh, Reflection Sunday falls on my my 68th birthday. <laughs> my 68th birthday. You know, I, mean? <laughs> I thank God for that uh, for my for my birthdays for all of them. Um, you know, as I was growing up, there was a, a saying that age has its privileges. And, uh, you know, I hope that's true because I need God to, to keep that in mind as I, I speak to him <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I said to God, and I'm thinking, why am I still being tested? Uh -huh. And how do I know if I've passed? Yeah. You know, um, you know my, when my wife was going through this, this last surgery, you know, it, it, it's strange because at the time before that, when she had the, the brain surgeries, you know, I was, I was steady. I was strong. Uh, I knew God had it. I knew God had her. I was, it's great. This, this last one, you know, my knees were weak. Mm. My mouth was dry. Um, my eyes watered. Mm. I did not feel strong. And, you know, so, so, yeah, and, that, and yet, you know, I knew God was there. Um, and I know God wants the best for me. Mm -hmm. and, and for Gwen, you know, when I say, you know, as a, God said, love your wife as he loved the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and, and when people say, you know, you're, you're half, you're better half, you know, anyone who's, who's truly married knows there is no half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you are you. Yes. You know, the yes. best way it is. There's, 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 there's no difference. I mean, my wife is with me now as much as she is once I get home. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just the way it is. Yes. Um, oh, excuse me, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> 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 um, in Romans, Romans 5, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into his grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Now, um, as these, you know, God's given me a wonderful life. I mean, it's really been wonderful. It is wonderful. We have this this one. I don't know, one. You know, God could take the little money that I have, the, the possessions that I have. I really don't care. That 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 stuff is really <laughs> really means almost nothing to me. You know, um, but the but God's love and the love of my wife, those things. That's what's important to me. Amen. Um, you know, if God were to tell me to walk away from those other things, it would not, I would not hesitate oh, at all. Wow. But I asked God, I said, you know, and I let this be the last test. <laughs> I know, you know, I know the, 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 the right answer, the religious answer is, we're tested until God takes us home. I, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I want this to be, I asked, could, this, could this be the last one? And God didn't answer on that. So I, I already knew the answer. The answer. You know, when I was uh, in, in high school, and there were tests, and there were, there were things to study, and I used to, question my teachers about why this is important to me. Why the, the, the class, the test, they didn't seem to have any relevance okay. to my way of life. Okay. So I, I spent a lot of time speaking with the principal, uh, an awful lot of time. And as I got into college, I wasn't thrilled with that either, uh, the, the, what I was being asked to learn. Um, but as I speak with God, you know, I'm clear it has a relevance to my life. It is the relevant thing mm -hmm. uh, in my life. So Amen. I, uh, you know, and I, I get up and I, I see my, uh, my wife this morning and she was, she was happy, she was smiling, uh, we were laughing, and, I, and that's when I said it. I hope this, I want this to be the last test, mm -hmm. at least of this kind. Yeah. So I added that as time went along, and, and I'm speaking to God, and I was praying to God a little later, and God said, there will be more tests. <laughs> that, you know, that's not what I want to hear, God. <laughs> but, <laughs> but God, God is good, and Amen. God, um, he, he really uh, tells me things that, even on these requests that, that I know are not going to be answered. <laughs> I, I know going in. Well, I, I guess I want God to know my heart. I know he, he, he already knows, but I want him to hear it from me. And uh, I, I, remember I went to another, I referred me to another uh, verse, um, James. James, oh, that one? Here. James, yes. James 1, verses 2. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Mm -hmm. And in James 12, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, yes. which God has promised to those yes. who love him. Yes. So, that's what he said. 
you know, how do you know when you pass the test? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't that steadfast. I mean, <laughs> as I said, my knees were my knees were weak on this last one. Strong mm -hmm. on the one before, maybe weak on the one before that. But, but so I know that I need to grow that way. Mm -hmm. I know that I need to be stronger, uh, have more courage, be more consistent. Mm -hmm. And I ask God for that. Yeah. Uh, to give me that, to show me how to obtain that. Um, and then I go to Isaiah, Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Uh -huh. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will help uphold you with my righteous right hand. Yeah. So God sent me to that passage. And when I'm feeling like, you know, I'm failing, mm -hmm. he sends me to a passage that says, you're not failing at all. I, am you. I, will, I will help you. Amen. And that, you know, is, is the strength. That gives me strength. And that knows that while I may still be tested, I think I might be passing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I know y'all got this funny, right? Yeah. Amen. Because <laughs> Brother Les started out with how, um, you know, Gwen had her first surgery, and brain surgery, and he, he was okay with it. He was believing. But the second one, he was fearful. So he was listening to the fear. That's what was guiding him. But he also... Um, you know, as he kept talking, he he also expressed his faith in God. Amen. You know, because the word says, and Brother Les read it, that hope maketh not ashamed. Amen. And I hope it's the, the, the um, faith that we have in God, and God will not make us ashamed because of that if we continue to believe. And then uh, Brother Les ended with that God told him to fear not. And then he said, he thinks he's passing the test. Amen. <laughs> and it's funny because, um, you all don't know this probably, but before, right after Gwen took her, had her surgery, we were at, um, it was right after the food pantry. And Brother Les was in the back, and I was sitting here, and God, spoke to me and he told me to go tell Brother Les something. And Brother, I told Brother Les what God said, and you often hear it, that you know when you're in school and you're taking tests, the teacher is always quiet during the test. So that's what God told me to tell Brother Les, because he was saying that he couldn't, he didn't hear God's voice and he's going through this faith thing. Amen. So I went and told him, I said, God said that sometimes the teacher is quiet during the test. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, so God was watching Brother Les to see if he was going to continue to believe mm -hmm. in spite of what his fear mm -hmm. was saying to him. Amen. And as Brother Les said, he thinks he passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> so the teacher was watching. The teacher gave you a grade. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. That God is good. good. Amen. He's just so faithful. And he's just, he's always speaking to us. We just have to hear him. Amen. That, I'm going to say that. Uh, Brother Christian, would you like to come up and share today? Amen. I see you um, nice and sharp in your white suit. So. <laughs> I'm not, um, I don't have a scripture it's okay. um, this time, but um, I do um, have a dream that uh, um, I'm, I'm not I'm okay, <laughs> but um, it's just that um, about a week ago. Um, I don't dream a lot, so this dream was 
um, I don't know, like it, it was something different. Um, so it was that um, we was walking on a path. Um, a lot of people. Um, it was uh, horses, people, horses, in one little path. And we just going through, like, people coming and going. And we just, it was my wife and me walking. She had a child on her hand. And I just, it, uh, it was weird. Um, so as we was walking, this woman um, approached. She was, she was, she was coming. We was going. So she was like not to now on the other side of the road, uh, of the little path, but uh, like in the middle. Mm -hmm. So she was coming towards us. I mean, really, um, it was just weird. So we were walking, and she was coming, and as she was approaching. She looked at me, a long hair um, lady with, uh, she was wearing something black. <laughs> so, um, and she just said to me, um, God needs you. God needs you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, um, it was weird to me because, like, I know God don't need me. I need God. That's <laughs> what <laughs> I said to myself. So, you know, and, and it was weird to me because I don't dream. I, I, I have no dreams. I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, um, it was just weird to me. So then I said to myself, um, I need to pray more. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. I need to have faith on him because I don't. Praise the Lord. And 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 even though I see all the stuff that he does for me or he does for us, uh, in my family, and still, like, I still don't have faith. Mm. That faith that I need on him. It was proven to me yesterday. Uh, once again, uh, we was um, heading to the branch yesterday. We was driving. Um, we got to the base, and uh, so as we show our ID card to the guard, um, you know, he went and checked the ID cards, and um, he made me go to the side. No. So I just, you know, ask myself, like, what's going on? <laughs> I don't think there's nothing wrong with me. You know, like, <laughs> I'm doing everything right, you know, according to God. I don't, I don't think there's something wrong, you know. But I mean, I still have fear mm -hmm. inside of me. I don't know why. You know, all this going on at work and stuff like that, I was like, man, maybe they did something. You know, like in my record, and now it's showing. Wow. Oh. So, but I mean, you know, he already took care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, but I mean, like, and me knowing it because he had worked um, good. I mean, he had worked. In, mm -hmm. He had worked. I mean, like tremendously on on our life. You know, and um, so I don't know why I was fearing. Mm -hmm. Why I have this fear. You know, so I, I said to myself, um, and my wife asked me, like, uh, you know, are you okay? You know, like, I was like, yeah, I'm okay. But I was still nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> even though he had everything under control, but uh, I, I was lacking in faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, so, you know, the guy came in. After that, and he was like, "Hey, um, I, I was expecting the worst." <laughs> so he came in and he said, "Hey, uh, um, 
now your Wi-Fi D card was expired, and that's the reason why we, you know, we told you to pull to the side. You know, I was, oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> you know, and then, um, um, you know, I thought it was something bigger. <laughs> but, um, you know, at the end, um, it was just that um, I need to sharpen up my, my faith wow. in him because, um, you know, he revealed something to me in a dream, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, like, I still, and I ask myself, like, I ask God, what it is, what you want me to do, wow. you know, <laughs> because I know you got a purpose for me, but I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, just, just, you know, keep, keep putting me in that path so I can do whatever you want me to do for you. Mm -hmm. And I also kind of thought about, you know, if God need me, that means he want me in heaven or he want me here. <laughs> so, you know, all those questions, you know, came, came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, um, if you want me in heaven, please, at least let me see my kids go. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and then, <laughs> you know, it, it was just something that, uh, I mean, it, 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 to me, because I don't dream like that, I never dream, so to me it was just, wow, yeah. very, very uh, powerful. And, um, you know, but I still need to work on my faith. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I also thank you guys for wow. everything that you guys, you know, um, do for me. And Glenn, um, your wife, um, you know, all the prayers that we do for, for everybody in this church. Amen. I mean, it, it works. Mm -hmm. You know, the prayers yeah. definitely works. Um, you know, and I see it, you know, but I mean, I still know that we need to work on our faith. Amen. You know, and that's the only thing. Everything else, I mean, he's on control. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 has a, a humble spirit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, sometimes people that just it just get so concerned about how we sound or how mm -hmm. we look or Amen. I don't have a scripture or I don't know where it is. We we can find so many excuses why Amen. we can't do something or do what God wants us to do. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't. Amen. You know, God just you said you had a dream, and you hardly dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, God speaks to dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. So God speaks. And I believe you heard him because you said, God, the lady told you God needs you. <laughs> but you said, I need God. And the truth is, it's both. <laughs> because God needs you to do his will on this earth. Mm -hmm. But you need God so you will have the faith to do what he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God is speaking to you, and you are hearing. <laughs> You're open to Him, and that's a good place to be that we can recognize. But that's one of the things, one of the challenges of overcoming voices in our head that are not of God is to humble ourselves and say, I need God to hear Him, to be able to do what He wants me to do, you know? Because you know, it's, it's a submission, we were talking about that this morning, to the voice of God and to what He wants you to do, you know, so that's a good place to be. Amen. That's a good place to be. So when we hear other things that's telling us things, even you were even concerned about the woman telling you God needs you, you know, and that's a good place because you always want to point it back to God, you know, I need God. You know, so I, I just think that's that's a great place. So you want you want that voice to dominate anything else, and God has a way of putting bows on things, and uh, I like that. Amen. I didn't know that. Look at that. He put the bow on it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's what he did. That's what he did. And I just thank God for His goodness. I thank God for His grace. I thank God for His word and for who he is and how he speaks to his people. Each one of us, you know, individually, yeah. he speaks to and 
we don't all come the same way. We may not Amen. know the whole Bible. I don't even know where all the scriptures are. I know it's in there because the words are hidden in my heart. Amen. I know it's in there. So, but um, I may not know where it is. But I just thank God that just he, that he just does things the way he wants to and that we have a heart to submit to that. Amen. Amen. And with that, I'm going to call my pastor up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so he can close this out. Bless the Lord. My timing is over for the day. Amen. <laughs> is that your voice or God's? That's God's. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Amen. God. We have a double header in the store right today. Amen. <laughs> Afternoon service. <laughs> praise God. Uh, praise God. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm taking. Uh, you know, a lot of notes. I'm just impressed of, of how God is just speaking and speaking and speaking to each one of you. And praise God for each one of you allowing God to just use you to to, to share. Amen. With an honesty and a, and a humility that I think just leads people to be free. Um, because, quite frankly, amen, when people stand up here, no one really needs to see us. Amen. Even though you can't help but see someone and their personality and all those things, but at the end of the day, you want to see and hear God more than you Amen. see or hear anybody else. Amen. So I just, it was just, it was just wonderful. And so I, I, you know, I laugh, and it was, you know, it's good to laugh too. You know, I like laughing. Amen. And, um, uh, but you know, brother Christian, I mean, it made me laugh. You know. <laughs> God needs you. You know, I know God don't need me. No, He does need you. Amen. Amen. You know, so you know that isn't that? Don't they have that that army poster where Uncle Sam is yes. pointing? Yeah. Right. I want you. Yeah. Right. I mean, and and you know, somebody can say, "Well, the country don't need me," but you know what I'm saying? You know, we all have a role to play. Amen. Um, and and so to that extent, yeah, God does need need us to carry out his his plan in the earth and so uh, yeah that was funny but yeah but God needs you and isn't this something yeah, and it's, but I hear what you're saying right because God could choose anybody that's why if you don't God says don't get it no, I'll find somebody else but but if we're submissive to it amen God needs us to carry out certain things and and uh, if we're submissive, he can do great things through you, amen? And that's an encouragement. Just submit to God and let him do great things through you, amen? So that that, that was funny. Less was even funnier, amen? You know, you tell God, don't let there be any more. Let this be the next test. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, boy, oh, boy. And <laughs> that reminded me of the time when I said, God, I said to God, all I want to do, Lord, yes. is to go to church and just sit down. I remember saying that. Yeah. And it seems like ever since then, I have not, God, like, you don't even have a chair, son. <laughs> So you might have get used to being on your feet. Um, so when you said that, but I go, no, no, don't say that. Don't, don't, don't say that. But uh, but like you said, you already knew what the answer, what the answer amen. was. Amen. And my soul was blessed. Amen. When um, Sister Fennell said that uh, God impressed on her heart to share with you, you know, a powerful truth, right? That the teacher is often silent during the test. That 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 thing speaks yeah. right there, amen. Yeah. Because when we're tested and we wonder where God is, you know, it is, you know, during the test when you're in school, mm -hmm. teacher wasn't saying anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that that spoke to me and I pray to God for that. That's a good one. I'm gonna hold on to those. And we need anchors in our soul, amen. And that's that's gonna be an anchor. Uh, an anchor for me, amen. Uh, Patricia talked about praising. Amen. That's so funny because that is something that I think sometimes, you know, in that picture God gave you of the unbalanced scales. Oof. I know. You asking for a whole lot, but you ain't doing a whole lot of <laughs> thanking and praising. Amen. I mean, that's a sobering thing that makes you just say, okay, I got to get this. I got to I gotta be that in line and in balance. Amen. And how many of us, amen, it's easy to, you know, 
to ask, but you know, it's, it's even more important to think. And here's the thing too, right, that you talk about Jehoshaphat, they were thanking before mm -hmm. they got the answer, right? Before they won. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a faith, that's when you know you are great in faith. Yeah. When you can ask God and then you thank God before the, the thing comes, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, uh, confuse the enemy, amen? Let him see you thanking God even though you don't have it yet in your hand, right? And that'll also in, in, in inspire you to just walk around like a faith giant, amen? Because you're thanking, you're thanking God for the invisible, showing your walk by faith and yeah. not by sight, amen? amen. And uh, Sister Nina, the thing I kept that I got from her was that God just told her to keep going. Yes, keep yeah. going. And the thing about that is, I can't tell you how many times when I ask God for something, I know it's happened to every one of you in here, and he just gives you like here, two words or one word, and he doesn't really tell you everything is going to be all right. Don't worry, I'm going to fix it. Don't worry, I'm going to move it. He doesn't tell you the whole thing. He just tells you something like this, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Or he'll say, it's okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, uh, can you give me a little more, please? Yeah, yeah. Right? Little. But that's all he gives you, and yet you gotta allow that to be enough. Right. And then you know you tell you gave the end of the story, right? Everything comes through, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you wonder why can't he have told you everything would come through? <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's not how God works. He's a, he's a God, right? We, we, we have to walk with him in faith. Amen. Amen. You know, Sister Canel started us off about our thinking, and we know how important our thinking is. Amen. And she made me laugh, too, when she said, uh, my head sometimes tells me some crazy stuff. <laughs> Who can't relate to that, amen? But we got so many things that go on and our thoughts go so fast. But I, I, I'm gonna stop with this. I read something Kenneth Copeland once wrote, and he said, thoughts can't stop thoughts. Only words stop thoughts. And he gave an example, right? Uh, if you were to Count in your head, just think from one to ten. You could do that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you could think about what you're going to eat after church. Right. Try it. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah. Right? You can think several things in your head at the same time. <laughs> but now count one to ten mm -hmm. and say your name out loud. Mm -hmm. well, say your name out loud. They don't know their names, bro. <laughs> 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 Glory to God. Lord, you said soundness of mind. <laughs> they done lost it, amen. Let, let's try it again, try again. amen. Now, in your mind, think one to ten. Now say your name. Nice. What happened to the thoughts? It's gone. gone. They stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't keep Thinking and speaking, and speaking wow. at the same time. <laughs> wow. So think about it now. When you have a thought in your head, you think you're going to combat it with other thoughts. Mm -hmm. You need to combat it with the Word of God wow. and say it out your mouth. That's good. Right? Yeah. So when those thoughts come about you're going to lose, you need to say, I'm more than a conqueror. Because that's going to yeah. stop that thought. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's and so... We shouldn't try, when those other voices, I'm talking about the other ones, right? Not the voice of God, the, no. other the other voices start to come in our head. Don't fight them with other thoughts. Mm -hmm. Fight them with words that are spoken out of your mouth. Yeah. We believe, therefore have we spoken. Yeah. We also believe and therefore speak. speak, speak. Not think, mm -hmm. right? So we speak because our our audible words will stop our silent thoughts. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so, um, yeah, let, let, let's open our mouth. God, God didn't think the world into existence, folks. Amen? Right? Amen. He didn't think it into existence. He spoke it into existence. 
So let us speak. God's been impressing that upon me. He told me this week, you're not speaking enough. And I, I, I got convicted. I said, you know, you're absolutely right. I'm sitting here thinking and hoping and believing. How many of us do that? Yeah. I'm sitting here hoping, thinking, and believing. And I think I'm doing faith-filled stuff. But God spoke stuff into existence. He told me, I'm not speaking enough. Wow. I mean, they said, okay, I'm starting speaking everything. Mm -hmm. Everything I want, I'm going to say it out of my mouth. Everything I'm believing on, I'm going to say it out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to imitate my Father who's in heaven. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So praise God. Good stuff today. Amen. Real good stuff. And we just praise God for another Reflection Sunday. Praise God for all you obedient people. Amen. They're getting gooder and gooder. Amen. Amen. I have to do, I have to do it two Sundays. Mm. Is that a voice that I'm hearing from you, Lord? Is that just... That's you. That's you. <laughs> I'm not listening to that <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but we do praise God. Amen for that. Amen. Praise God for, for the really, amen. It has really been an encouragement to me, and I'm sure it's been an encouragement to each other and also for others. Amen. 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 And all the glory goes to God. Goes to God. Be the glory. Let's rest on our feet today then and let's pray together to the glorious God we serve. Father, we bless you today and we thank you, Lord, for what you have done in the midst. We thank you, God, how you continue to speak unto your people, oh God. There's one Lord, one Father, one Spirit. And we thank you, God, that your spirit has spoken to each one who has come forward on today yes. and shared something valuable, God, something precious, oh Lord, that allows us to be encouraged in our faith, strengthened in our spirit, yes. and to look to you, oh God, with, with a hope that will not fade. And Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for every person that has come in obedience and humility and who have spoken the truth in love. And we're believing, oh God, that our lives shall be the better for it in the name of Jesus. Let the words that have been spoken today continue, oh God, to saturate our hearts. Yeah. And Father, may the Holy Spirit even bring us into a deeper truth and understanding of that which has transpired. That Father God, that we can just grow in revelation and insight. And Father God, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Yes. Father, we thank, thank you, you, God, one more time for what you have done in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we are preparing to leave, but we uh, are so grateful, God, that we will never leave your presence. So continue to rest, rule, and abide with us as we go about the rest of this day. Guide us by your spirit. Yes. Help us at every turn. And Father, we thank you and we bless you right now, God, for all that you are in all that you are doing and that you shall do. Yes. And Father, we believe that the best is truly yet to come and we shall see signs, wonders, and miracles in our midst. Yes. And we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen.